Dear student, today we are going to see the linear differential equation. Actually, you know the complete solution of linear differential equation is nothing but yc plus yp, means complementary function plus particular integral. So, here we are going to see how to find particular integral by using shortcut method. So, short methods to find particular integral for f of d operating on y equal to f of x. So, rule number one here when right hand side is f of x equal to e raised to ax. So, what is that? So, if f of x equal to e raised to ax, then pi that we know 1 upon f of d operating on f of x. So, what is f of x here? e raised to ax and that is why that is equal to 1 upon f of d operating on e raised to ax. So, what is this rule says? This rule says that is equal to 1 upon f of a e raised to ax provided f of a is not equal to 0. So, you observe that if we compare this two. So, here every d replaced by a provided this denominator is not equal to 0. But suppose f of a equal to 0 then that is equal to x upon f dash of a e raised to x provided f dash of a is not equal to 0. That is multiply by x and differentiate f of d with respect to d. So, what is the meaning of it? Then you have to multiply by x and take the derivative of f of d with respect to d and then again the same rule d replaced by a provided denominator is not equal to 0. Suppose this denominator equal to 0, then again the same rule, again multiply by x, so already x is there, so one more x means it is x square, next derivative, it is the first derivative was there, so now second derivative and again d replaced by a provided f double dash of a is not equal to 0 and so on. So student, you note here that if suppose 1 upon d minus a raised to r, operating on e raised to ax means what when we replace d by a i'm getting zero but what is the power of that r so r time i will get here zero and that is why student can directly write this result that is a x raised to r upon r factorial e raised to a also when they are one upon d minus a raised to r g of d operating on e raised to ax so you just observe here for this one d replaced by a it becomes 0 but what is the power r and that is why it gives x raised to r upon r factorial and this g of d replace d by a so i am getting here g of a provided g of a is not equal to 0 so where we can use this rule number one directly so in the following cases also we can use rule number one so number one so, we can write b raised to x equal to e raised to log of b raised to x. Actually, this is nothing but b raised to x. That is equal to e raised to x log b. And that is equal to, can I write the same thing as log b into x? So, you just consider it is just like e raised to ax where a equal to log b. And that is why by the rule number 1, d replaced by a and that is log b. So where I can use this one? 2 raised to x, 3 raised to x, 4 raised to x like that. If 2 raised to x, so I can write here e and log. You know e and log get cancelled. And 2 raised to x. And that is equal to this x I can take here. That is why e x log 2. And the same thing I can write e log 2 first and x. So you can observe or you can compare with e raised to ax. So what is value of a? It is a log 2. So d replaced by a means log 2. So, when 2 raised to x, d replaced by log 2. 3 raised to x, d replaced by log 3. Similarly, b raised to x, d replaced by log b. Now, the second. Also, we can write b equal to b into e raised to 0 x. So, what is the e raised to 0? e raised to 0 is 1. So, every constant, maybe 2, 3, 5, 7, I can write just like this b. b equal to b into 1. And 1 is nothing but e raised to 0 x. And again use the rule number 1. You can write here a equal to 0. So whenever there are constant term. Means 2, 5, 7, 9, 1 by 2 like that. Then I can directly replace d by 0. In one more case I can use this rule number 1 directly. Since we know the hyperbolic sin x and hyperbolic cos x. By definition hyperbolic sin x equal to e raised to x minus e raised to minus ax by 2 and hyperbolic cos ax equal to e raised to ax plus e raised to minus ax by 2. So, you can use here for this one, for this one, here d replaced by a, 
here d replaced by minus a rule number one. Okay, let's consider one example on rule number one. So solve d cube plus d square plus 4d minus 4 operating on y equal to e raised to x. So what is the solution here? So step number one, the given differential equation is d cube minus d square plus 4d minus 4 operating on y equal to e raised to x. And the general solution that we know, the general solution of the given differential equation is y equal to yc plus yp. It means that solution of linear differential equation into two parts, one is yc and second is yp. So find your first part that is the yc. So step number two, for C, auxiliary equation is, what is the auxiliary equation? Coefficient of y equal to 0. And that is why I am getting d cube minus d square plus 4d minus 4 equal to 0. So observe that we can common out d square here and 4 here. So we will get here d square in bracket d minus 1 plus 4 in bracket d minus 1. So d minus 1 common and remaining is d square plus 4. So that is why I am getting here d minus 1 d square plus 4 equal to 0. So this implies d minus 1 equal to 0 and d square plus 4 equal to 0. So this implies d equal to 1. So from this I am getting d equal to 1 and from this one I am getting d square equal to minus 1 and therefore take the square root of both sides. So d equal to actually here should be plus minus under root of minus 4. So remember there whenever there are under root of minus sign so for that minus sign, I will get here i and what is the remaining 4? So what is the square root of 4? I am getting 2. Similarly, I can write here minus 9. So for this minus, I am getting i and what is the square root of this 9? It is the 3. Similarly, under root of minus 3. So I will get for this minus i and the root 3 that as it is. So I am getting like this. So that is why I am getting here d equal to 1 and d equal to plus minus 2i. So what is a yc? To find yc here d equal to 1 it is a real. But this is a complex and you observe that real part is 0 and imaginary part is 2 here. And therefore I can write d equal to 1 and d equal to 0 plus 2i. So by the rule here yc equal to c1 e raised to x c2 cos 2x c3 sin 2x because real part is 0 and imaginary part is 2. So, I am getting this. So, just denote it is equation number 2. So, we have first part of the solution yc. Now, what about the yp? So, let's start step number 3 for pi. We know yp equal to 1 upon f of the operating on f of x. So, what is f of x here? It is e raised to x. So, 1 upon d cube minus d square plus 4d minus 4. So, by rule, I can write here replace d by a. a is what here? It is 1. So you observe that when we put here d equal to 1, this denominator equal to 0. How? So here if we put d equal to 1, I am getting 1 minus 1 plus 4 minus 4. So you can observe that is equal to 0. And therefore, we have to use here that multiply by x and take the derivative of denominator. So what is the derivative of this denominator here? The denominator is 3d square minus 2d plus 4. That is why yp equal to x upon 3d square minus 2d plus 4 operating on e raised to x. Rule is same that replace d by 1. So I am getting now here that is nothing but 5. So I am getting yp equal to x by 5 e raised to x. Now this is the free from d. This, this is the final yp. So equation number 3. So we have now yc and yp. Therefore now I am able to write the complete solution as from equation 2 and 3 the complete solution is y equal to c1 e raised to x plus c2 cos 2x plus c3 sin 2x. This is y and yp is x by 5 plus e raised to x. So this is your complete solution. So consider the one example on the shortcut method rule number 1. Solve d square plus 5d plus 6 operating on y equal to e raised to x. So here what is the solution for that? Solution is given differential equation is d square plus 5d plus 6 operating on y equal to e raised to x. So the general solution or you can say the complete solution of the given differential equation is y equal to yc plus yp. 
what is yc you can say it is a cf plus pr so we want to find here both yc and yp so how to find yc here this is a step number 1 you can say so step number 2 cf so auxiliary equation is what is auxiliary equation here the coefficient of y equal to 0 and therefore i am getting here d square plus 5 d plus 6 equal to 0 find the roots of this equation so here 6 so what are the factors here 3 and 2 both having a positive sign right because i need here addition should be plus 5 and uh, multiplication should be plus 6 addition plus 5 and multiplication plus 6 therefore i can write here d plus 3 d plus 2 equal to 0 and therefore i will get here d plus 3 equal to 0 and d plus 2 equal to 0 this implies that d equal to minus 3 and minus 2 so you can see here both roots are real and distinct and therefore what is the yc here you can say that yc equal to c1 e raise to minus 3x first root plus c2 e raise to minus 2x so this is your first part equation number 2 so we have now yc how to find yp now so step number 3 yp means pr so yp equal to 1 upon f of d so what is f of d here d square plus 5d plus 6 operating on f of x means right hand side here so what is it here e raise to x so rule number 1 says that here every d replaced by 1 because here e raise to ax d replaced by a so here e raise to x so d replaced by 1 and therefore yp equal to 1 upon d square means 1 square plus 5 into 1 plus 6 into e raise to x so what is this value it is a 1 plus 5 plus 6 equal to 12 and therefore i am getting yp equal to 1 by 12 e raise to x now it is a free from d means it is a final yp so it is equation number 3 so second part also we have so now the next step that collection of all so step number 4 from equation 1 2 and 3 we get complete solution y equal to yc plus yp what is yc we have yc equal to c1 e raise to minus 3x plus c2 e raise to minus 2x plus yp is 1 by 12 e raise to x so this is your final answer now shortcut method rule number two what is that rule number two when right hand side that is f of x equal to sine of ax or cos of ax so if f of x equal to sine of ax plus b then pi equal to 1 upon f of d operating on f of x it becomes 1 upon f of d square sine of ax so you just observe your chain this d you have to write in the form of d square right then only i can replace 1 upon f of minus a square sine of ax if you observe here so d square you can replace by minus a square it means that or this shows that when d square is there then only i can replace provided this denominator is not equal to 0 if denominator is equal to 0 means if f of minus a square equal to 0 then just like a rule number 1 i am getting pi equal to 1 upon f of d square operating on sine of ax plus b it becomes now multiply by a take the derivative and again the same rule d square replaced by minus a square provided f dash of minus a square means denominator is not equal to zero and so on same rule you can use so what is this rule here that is multiply by x and differentiate f of d square with respect to d and replace every d square by minus a square here you just note we cannot replace a d we can replace only d square that is why you must remember this important note in this method we, while finding pi we are putting d square equal to minus a square sometimes f of d is not in f of d square form then rationalize it and convert f of d in f of d square form what is the meaning of rationalization 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल आफ्टर कैलकुलेशन आई एम गेटिंग डी माइनस टू वन अपॉन डी माइनस टू तो मल्टीप्लाई रैशनलाइजेशन मीन मल्टीप्लाई एंड डिवाइड बाय डी प्लस टू तो हियर आई कैन यूज ए माइनस बी ए प्लस बी फॉर्मूला एंड आई विल गेट हियर डी प्लस टू अपॉन डी स्क्वेयर माइनस फोर तो अगेन आई कैन रिप्लेस डी स्क्वेयर बाय माइनस ए स्क्वेयर एंड इन न्यूमरेटर डी मीन्स डेरेवेटिव यू मस्ट रिमेम्बर डी मीन्स डी बाय डी एक्स मीन्स डेरेवेटिव एंड वेन एवर डिनोमेटर वन बाय डी देन इट इज अंटीरिश so not necessary always there will be only sin ax plus b or cos ax plus b sometimes it may contain sin square cos square and that is why you must remember some important formula sin x into cos y cos x into sin y cos x into cos y sin x into sin y cos square x sin square x sin cube x cos cube x you must remember so student now consider one example on shortcut method rule number 2 what is that Solve d cube plus 4 d operating on y equal to sine 2x. So what is the solution for that? So first write the given differential equation d cube plus 4 d operating on y equal to sine 2x. Sine a x plus b or cos a x plus b. That is the rule number two. The complete solution of given differential equation is y equal to y c plus y p. What is y c here? That is c f. And P I. So both we want to find here. So complete solution into two parts. That is the Y C and Y P. So how to find Y C? So consider here. So here I can consider that is the step number one. Okay. Now the step number two to find C F. How to find C F? Consider here auxiliary equation. So what is the auxiliary equation here? That coefficient of Y equal to zero. And therefore, I am getting here d cube plus 4d equal to zero. So find the roots of this equation. So I can common out d. So I am getting d square plus 4 equal to zero. And therefore, d equal to zero and d square plus 4 equal to zero. So here I am getting d square equal to minus 4 and the d equal to taking square root of both side. So d equal to plus minus under root of minus 4. and that you know already if under root of minus any number under root of minus 4 under root of minus 3 so here for this minus i am getting i and under root of remaining that 9 is 3 so here also due to this minus sign it is i and under root of 4 it is a 2 due to this minus sign i am getting i and the root of 3 as it is so that is why i am getting here D equal to plus minus i and two. Due to this minus sign i and root of four, it is two. So therefore, we have the roots D equal to zero and plus minus i two. So how to write C F here? So here first root is real and second is a complex. So in this complex, I can write here it is a zero plus minus i two. So what is the real part? It is zero and what is the imaginary part? It is a two. And therefore. Y C equal to therefore Y C equal to C one e raised to here real number is zero so zero x plus for this complex number real part is zero imaginary part is two and that is why it will be a e raised to real part x in bracket C two cos of imaginary x plus C three sine of imaginary x same thing I can write here Y C equal to what is e raised to zero x here it is one. And therefore, I can write y c equal to c one plus c two cos of two x plus c three sine of two x c three sine of two x. So this is your y c. So first part of the solution, that is equation number two. Now step number three, second part of the solution, that is a particular integral p i. How to find p i? That you know. Y p equal to one upon y f of d. So what is y f of d here? Y f of d is d q plus four d. Operating on right hand side, it is sine two x. D q plus four d operating on sine two x. So what rule says? It is a rule number two. That is every d square replaced by minus a square. It means that here minus four. Note that here a is two. So a square is four. So minus a square. So minus four. So d square replaced by minus four. 
Note that here we can replace only d square. So that is why d cube I can write as d into d square. And this d square you replace by minus 4. And therefore I am getting yp equal to 1 upon d into minus 4 plus 4d operating on sin 2x. So you just observe it is 0. And that is why this part fails here. So what to do? It means that if denominator is 0, then multiply by x, take the derivative of it. So what is the derivative of this denominator? I am getting it is the derivative with respect to d is a 3d square plus 4 operating on sin 2x. Again the same rule, every d square replaced by minus a square means minus 4. And that is why I am getting it is equal to x upon 3 into minus 4 plus 4 into sin 2x. So this is your final answer. Why? Because it is a free from d. So this is your yp. So just simplify it. What is this one? It is a minus 12 plus 4 that is equal to minus 8. And therefore I can write here yp equal to x upon minus 8 sin of 2x. This is equation number 3. So next step that is just a collection of yc and yp. So we can find the complete solution. So from equations 1, 2 and 3, we get the complete solution is y equal to yc. What is yc here? yc equal to t1 plus t2 cos 2x plus c3 sin 2x plus yp. yp is here. Minus x by 8 into sin 2x. So this is your complete solution. Now consider the rule number 3. When right hand side f of x equal to hyperbolic sin x plus b or hyperbolic cos x plus b. Here if f of x equal to hyperbolic sin x plus b then pi equal to 1 upon f of d operating on f of x. This f of d you write in the form of f of d square first. So that is why 1 upon f of d square operating on hyperbolic sin x plus b. It becomes 1 upon f of a square hyperbolic sin ax plus b provided this denominator means f of a square is not equal to 0. What is the here? That is that every d square replaced by a square. If this denominator equal to 0 means f of a square equal to 0, then again the same that pi equal to 1 upon f of d square operating on hyperbolic sin ax plus b that is equal to multiply by x and take the derivative of this one f of d square and every d square replaced by a square providing denominator means f dash of a square is not equal to 0 and so on. Means what is the meaning of this? I can write here multiply by x and differentiate f of d square with respect to d and replace d square by a square. Here also you remember important note in this method while finding pi we are putting d square equal to a square sometimes f of d is not in f of d square form then rationalize it and convert f of d in f of d square form and then you can replace d square by a square here. Then consider the next shortcut method that is rule number 4 when right hand side f of x equal to x raised to m means what here x raised to m means a polynomial in x it means it may contain x square plus 2 x cube plus 2x square plus 5x like that. If f of x equal to x raised to m then pi equal to 1 upon f of d operating on f of x that is equal to 1 upon f of d operating on x raised to m. So you must write this f of d in this form. Means first f of d you write it is equal to 1 plus or minus pi of d and then you consider this f of d in numerator so I am getting 4 inverse. Expand this part up to d raised to m because here x raised to m up to d raised to m and then you operate on x raised to m. So, student can remember these steps here. That's a note. In this method, first write f of d equal to 1 plus minus phi of d by taking lowest degree term common from f of d. When we shift denominator in numerator, then I will get here whole inverse and then expand this bracket by using this formula. 1 plus z whole inverse and that is 1 minus z plus z square minus z cube plus z raised to 4 and so on. Expand the bracket up to mth power term means here x raised to m that is what 
we have to expand up to d raised to m only. Operate each term of expansion on x raised to m. We get required particular integral. With the help of examples, we will clear each and every part of this. For the understanding of rule number 4, clearly, just consider one example on x. Solve d square minus 2d plus 5 operating on y equal to 25 x square. So, note that here right hand side is x square means here x raised to m part. So, now it is a routine the complete solution but before to that. So, solution given differential equation you write again d square minus 2d plus 5 operating on y equal to 25 x square. So, what is the complete solution or general solution? The complete solution of given differential equation is y equal to yc plus yp. It means that first part is cf and second part is particular integral pr. So, how to find it? But this is equation number 1. So, now the step number 2. So, in step number 2, we will find first part of the solution that is the cf. How to find cf there? Auxiliary equation. What is the auxiliary equation? That coefficient of y equate to 0. And therefore, I am getting here d square minus 2d plus 5 equal to 0. So, just find the roots of this equation. So, what are the factors of this 5? 5 factors are 5 and 1. So, even though addition or subtraction, I am not getting 2 here. And that is why I have to use a formula d equal to minus b plus minus under root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. When the quadratic equation is ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0. If we compare, so here I am getting a equal to 1, b equal to minus 2 and c equal to 5. And therefore, d equal to minus of minus 2 means plus 2 under root of, so minus b plus minus under root of b square minus 4 a into c divided by 2 a. So, I am getting here 2 plus minus under root of 4 minus 20 whole divided by 2 and that is equal to 2 plus minus under root of minus 16 whole divided by 2. So, that is equal to 2 plus minus. So, you know that when minus under root of minus then it is i. So, I am getting here i and under root of 16 it is a 4 whole divided by 2. So, that is why d equal to 2 by 2 it is a 1 plus minus i and 4 by 2 it is a 2. So, d equal to 1 plus minus i 2. So, to write y c means c of here roots are complex. So, what is the real part here? So, real part is 1 and this is imaginary part that is 2 and therefore y c equal to e raised to real part x means 1 x in bracket c 1 cos of imaginary x plus c 2 sin of imaginary x. So, this is your half part means c of y c. So, equation number 2. Now, how to find next part that is a particular integral that I can say that p i. So, y p equal to 1 upon f of d. So, what is f of d here? d square minus 2 d plus 5 d square minus 2 d plus 5 operating on 25 x square. So, in the rule number 4, you must remember all steps. So, first you write this part in ascending. Ascending means here like this. 5 minus 2d plus d square. Okay. Then you take this term common. So, I am getting 5 in bracket 1 plus always plus. Remaining. What is remaining? Minus 2d plus d square whole divided by 5. So, this I am getting. So, it is in the form of 1 plus phi of d. Right. It is in denominator. And then you take in numerator, so I am getting whole inverse. So, by these steps, I can write here 1 upon yp equal to 1 upon 5 minus 2d plus d square operating on 25 x square. So, that is equal to 1 upon, so 5 common in bracket, I am getting 1 plus minus 2d plus d square whole divided by 5 operating on 25 x square. So, therefore, yp equal to 1 by 5 in bracket 1 plus minus 2d plus d square 
whole divided 5 and whole inverse operating on 25 x square. So, now you just see this part as 1 plus z whole inverse and what is that? It is 1 minus z plus z square minus z cube plus and so on. But I want up to square only because here x square. So, that is why maximum z square I want. And therefore, I am getting yp equal to 1 by 5 in bracket 1 minus. What is z here? It is a minus 2d plus d square whole divided 5 plus z square. So, minus 2d plus d square whole divided by 5 whole square bracket close because I want up to square only. And here, this part is your z operating on 25 x square. Now simplify, but do not forget I want up to square, d square, not more than that. So, yp equal to 1 by 5, 1 minus, so minus minus plus after simplification, I am getting minus d square by 5 plus. So, what is the square of this one? It is a 25. So, I am getting 1 by 25 outside and I will use here a plus b. So, here minus 2d plus d square whole square. What is it? It is a a square, so minus 2ab or plus 2ab. So, here I am getting minus 4d cube plus b square means here d raised to 4. But I do not require this both the things. And that is why I am taking here only 4d square bracket close operating on 25x square. So, yp equal to it is 1 by 5 in bracket 1 plus 2 by 5d minus. So, d square there are two terms. So, first term is d square is minus 1 by 5 plus 4 by 25. So, find this value by calculator. So, I am getting here minus 1 by 25. So, this value is minus 1 by 25 d square operating on 25 x square. Now, see there here 25 x square. Note that in numerator, when d is there, it is a derivative. So, what is derivative of 25x square? I am getting here 50x. What is next derivative of it? It is a d square and it is 50. And so, these values I can use here. So, I am getting yp equal to 1 by 5. So, 1 into all, it is a 25x square plus 2 by 5 d of 25x square. That value we have 50x minus 1 by 25. What is d square value? It is a 50. So, take here 50 and simplify. So, what is yp here? yp equal to 1 by 5 in bracket 25 x square plus so 5 and this will be 10 here. So, it will be a 20 x minus 2 because here 25 and here 50. So, it is a 2. So, this is your yp. So, it is equation number 3. So, now we have yc and yp. So, that is why I can write complete solution as. So, step number 4. From equations 1, 2 and 3. We get complete solution y equal to yc. So, this is your yc. e raised to x in bracket c1 cos 2x plus c2 sin 2x. So, that is why I am getting here e raised to x in bracket c1 cos of 2x plus c2 sin of 2x. And what is yp plus 1 by 5 in bracket 25x square plus 20x minus 2. So, this is your complete solution. So, one may simplify this further like this e raised to x in bracket c1 cos 2x plus c2 sin 2x and this 1 by 5 you multiply inside. So, I am getting here 5x square plus 4x minus 2 by 5, but not necessary. Now, next rule is rule number 5, short method rule 5 that is when right hand side f of x equal to e raised to x into b. So, see rule number 1 is e raised to ax only, but if along with e raised to x some function of x, then here it will be a rule number 5. So, what is that rule? If f of x equal to e raised to x into b, then p i equal to 1 upon f of b operating on f of x means 1 upon f of b 
operating on e raised to x into b then that is equal to e raised to x into 1 upon f of b plus a operating on v means when we shift this e raised to x that side then in this f of d every d replaced by b plus a a is what your coefficient of this x and then whatever the result you operate on this what is the remaining b b is a function of x so remaining part means you have to solve this 1 upon f of d plus a operating on b it may be rule number 1 rule number 2 rule number 3 or maybe the rule number 4 and we have it so student let's consider the examples on rule number 5 e raised to x into v so here is one example solve d square minus 4d plus 4 operating on y equal to e raised to 2x into sin 3x so as we know the all rules that is the rule number one is e raised to x second rule is sin of ax plus b or cos of ax plus b third rule is hyperbolic sin ax plus b or hyperbolic cos ax plus b fourth rule is x raised to m means polynomial and the fifth rule is e raised to x into v where v is a sum function of x so see the difference between first and fifth here only e raised to x and here e raised to x into something and that something is a function of x so here it is a rule number 5 so what is the solution for this that is the step number 1 given differential equation you write is a d square minus 4d plus 4 operating on y equal to e raised to 2x into sine of 3x so what is the complete solution that we know the complete or general solution of the given differential equation is y equal to yc plus yp means two parts here first part is cf and second part is pi so one by one we want to find the solution of this so step number two you find the first part that is the cf how to find cf first you know what is the auxiliary equation so what is the auxiliary equation here coefficient of y equate to 0 and that is why I am getting d square minus 4d plus 4 equal to 0. So what are the roots of this? You can write it is a perfect square of d minus 2 and this implies that I am getting here d minus 2 equal to 0 and d, and d minus 2 equal to 0 and therefore I am getting d equal to 2 and 2. So both roots are real but repeated and that is why what is a yc that is the two constant in one bracket that c1 plus c2x e raised to 2x so this is the first part of the solution now what about the second part so step number three that is a particular integral pi you know yp equal to 1 upon f of d that is here d square minus 4d plus 4 operating on e raised to 2x sin 3x so here f of d means what this is f of d and this is f of x so 1 upon f of d operating on f of x so same thing i can write here 1 upon d minus 2 whole square e raised to 2x into sin of 3x as we know 1 upon f of d when we operate on e raised to x into v then e raised to x into 1 upon f of d plus a it means that every d replaced by d plus a what is this a a is this coefficient of this x and operating on v so here a e raised to 2x so what is a a is 2 and that is why d replaced by d plus 2 and therefore i am getting yp equal to e raised to 2x and every d replaced by d plus 2 minus 2 as it is there operating on sine of 3x so note that here this d i am replacing d plus 2 remaining as it is so minus 2 as it is there so I am getting here yp equal to e raised to 2x 1 upon d square because this plus 2 minus 2 get cancelled operating on sine of 3x. So it is the rule number 2 sine ax plus b and that is why here rule says this d square replaced by minus a square. So what is a here it is 3. So what is the square of it it is a 9 and minus of 9. And that is why I am getting yp equal to e raised to 2x here 1 upon d square means minus 9 sine of 3x. So you can observe it is a free from d 
means it is the final yp. So minus 1 by 9 e raised to 2x into sine of 3x. It is your yp means second part of the solution. This is equation number 3. Now in the next step you just collect all solution. The both part of the solution that is from equations 1, 2 and 3. We get y equal to yc. So what is the yc here? So c1 plus c2x e raised to 2x plus yp. So here yp is minus 1 by 9 e raised to 2x sine of 3x. So this is your solution, final solution. What is the rule number 6 here? The short method rule number 6 is when right hand side f of x equal to x into b where b is any function of x. If f of x equal to x into b then pi that is equal to 1 upon f of d operating on f of x that is equal to 1 upon f of d operating on x into b and that rule says it is a in bracket x minus 1 upon f of d take the derivative of this f of d is f dash of d bracket close. 1 upon f of d operating on this v where v is a function of x. Here also when we are solving this part then we have to use any one of the rule that may be the rule number 1, rule number 2, rule number 3, rule number 4 and by using that we have to simplify this and we will get the p r. Consider the example on rule number 6. Solve d square plus 4 operating on y equal to x sin x. So x into v. So it is the rule number 6. So what is the solution for that? Solution is first you consider step 1 that is what are the given things. Given differential equation is d square plus 4 operating on y equal to x sin x. As we know the complete or general solution of the given differential equation is y equal to yc plus yp. It means that it is a c of plus pr. So, solution in the two parts. So, one by one we can find. So, step number two now the first part of the solution that is a c of. How to find c of that auxiliary equation is. So, what is the auxiliary equation here? So, coefficient of y equate to 0. So, therefore, so I am getting here d square plus 4 equal to 0. So, what this implies? d square equal to minus 4. Taking square root of both sides, so I am getting here d equal to plus minus under root of minus 4. And as we know, under root of minus, so I am getting i here. So, this implies d equal to plus minus due to minus sign it is i. And what is the under root of 4? It is a 2. So, I am getting here roots of this equation are plus minus 2i. So, do not forget it is nothing but 0 plus minus 2i. It means that real part is 0 and imaginary part is 2 here. And therefore, the yc equal to e raised to real part x in bracket c1 cos of imaginary part x plus c2 sin of imaginary part x. It means that e raised to 0x in bracket c1 cos of 2x plus c2 sin of 2x. So, what is the e raised to 0x? It is a 1. So, same thing I can write as only c1 cos 2x plus c2 sin of 2x. So, it is equation number 2. So, now what is the next part of this one? So, step number 3. What is that step number 3? That pi, particular integral, pi. So, what is the yp? It is 1 upon f of d. So, d square plus 4 operating on x sin x, operating on x sin x. And as we know 1 upon f of d operating on x into v, we know the rule is x minus 1 upon f of d into f dash of d bracket close into 1 upon f of d operating on that remaining v, v is a function of x. So, I am getting here by the same rule x minus 1 upon f of d means d square plus 4, derivative of that f of d means 2d bracket close 1 upon f of d means d square plus 4 operating on sin x. So, by simple multiplication I am getting x into 1 upon d square plus 4 sin x. Do not write this x as here. Okay, This is x initially. 
and this we have to solve minus 2d upon this into this it is a square of it. So, I am getting d square plus 4 whole square operating on sin x. Now, sin x if we see the rule number 1 is e raised to x, rule number 2 is sin a x plus b. So, here this is the rule, this rule is what that d square replaced by minus a square what is the a coefficient of x. So, here what is the coefficient of x? It is 1. So, that is why I am getting here is this d square replaced by minus a square means minus 1. Here also d square replaced by minus 1. So, that is equal to I am getting x as it is 1 upon d square is minus 1 plus 4 operating on sin x minus 2d as it is 1 upon minus 2d as it is upon minus 1 plus 4 whole square sin x. So, what is this minus 1 plus 4? I am getting it is a 3. So, that is why that is equal to x 1 by 3 sin x minus 2d here 3 square. So, it is 9 sin of x. So, operating. So, it, is it a complete yp? No. If it is a free from d, then it is a final, otherwise not. So, here it contains d. I already said that you must remember d means derivative and 1 by d means integration. So, I am getting here x by 3 sin x minus 2 by 9. What is the derivative of sin? Derivative of sin is cos x. So, that is equal to cos x. So, it is a free from d. So, this is your final yp. So, equation number 3. So, we have first part yc as well as yp. Second part. So, collection of both. So, I am getting complete solution as. So, collection of both as a step number 4 here. That is from equations 1, 2 and 3. We get complete solution as y equal to yc. So, what is yc here? So, y c here c 1 cos 2 x plus c 2 sin 2 x. So, y equal to c 1 cos 2 x plus c 2 sin 2 x plus y p means x by 3 sin x minus 2 by 9 cos x. So, this is your complete solution.